That is probably one of the the unnerving things, you know, when you actually going back to what we were talking about, you know, a couple months ago. Um, mm -hmm. Fundamentally, the numbers still aren't working. You know, I mean, they're, we're starting to see the expansion of the economy. Uh, the market likes that. But, you know, you've got all this debt, you know, and yes, the national debt, we're approaching 33 trillion, but the consumer debt, the corporate mm -hmm. debt and these loans that are coming due, you know, I, I think um, the banks cannot absorb those assets and and write it off. It's it's just it's too expansive. You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. And welcome. You are listening to watching the Financial Survival Network. I'm your host, Kerry Lutz. Well, imagine if they threw a recession and nobody came. or have you heard that the economists are so good they have called five out of the last three recessions? They're always calling for recessions. Are they right? Are they wrong? Let's talk with our good friend Ed Seidel and get the lowdown. So recession or no? I, you know what? Um, I, I think most of us assume that the economy was uh, not as strong as as it is, um, my, myself included, right? And you know, I've been saying for since we were talking last year, right, that we've kind of been in a rolling recession and we had the two negative quarters of GDP last year. So I, I think we actually had a recession last year. But I really um, I thought I thought the end of this year going into 2024, we were definitely going to have one. But um, I, I think the economy is stronger than and a little bit more resilient than what we anticipated. And. Um, and you can see it in the markets, right? I mean, investors are less fearful. If you look at the futures market, um, you know, the, the the dollar being weaker, which is a double-edged sword, but that's kind of helping, you know, the lifeblood of America, which are small businesses, because the exchange rate is is uh, lower, so less competition. And, and uh, you know, we're seeing it in small cap stocks. Um, so, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think we're going to continue to expand and the GDP numbers are are showing that. Um, uh, so yeah, I, but, I, I but, if we have, it's going to be very, very mild at best. What about the commercial real estate apocalypse? What about yeah. the banking crisis, which is ongoing? They just took over PacWest. They actually yep. handled that bank seizure the way they should have handled the uh, SVB. We wouldn't maybe have as bad a banking disaster as we have now. Uh, yeah. but, you know, they, you know, Janet Yellen, oh, no, there will not be a bailout. There will not be a bank bailout. And then uh, I guess she got the call from uh, Powell and said, well, if there's no bank bailout, there's no economy because it will result in a global collapse and bank runs in every bank in every country on the planet. So right. but but we still have those two major things coming up. I don't know if the full huge extent of the commercial meltdown, commercial real estate meltdown has been appreciated or understood by the markets and its potential effect, adverse effect on the banking sector. You, you know, I, I think, in my opinion, um, that the markets and, and retail investors and, and, and that's why the, it, the, the, the growth in the market was so narrow, right? It, it's starting to broaden out a little bit, but it's still very narrow when you're, when you're thinking of, you know, a, a bull market and the economy expanding, they're just ignoring it. Um, so short term, um, you know, the, the market is, is, uh, uh, on an uptick, um, and it is going to finish the year strong. The caveat is that. Um, and it's huge. You know, you've got the personal debt, um, credit cards. We talk about this all the time, all time high. People are living off of credit cards to be able to, to make ends meet. And then you've got the commercial loan. Um, it, if the economy continues to, to be strong and continues to, to expand, you know, I, I think the market has already priced in one more raise. Um, but if, if it continues to grow and Powell holds true to what he says, and continues to raise rates, we're going to see um, financial failure uh, like we haven't seen before. It's 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 going to be huge because we're looking at over three trillion dollars coming due in the next couple mm -hmm. of years. 
Yeah. Um, so I was talking to uh, an executive of a, a of a large regional bank, um, and they were telling me that they're not even writing loans right now, um, and they're very right. strong, very rated. Um, but the when these loans come due, the problem is is that the um, the they're not going to be able to qualify uh, with the new collateral requirements um, and and have the money down to to go forward. So I think that is going to be the that's an outlier uh, or that's a that's an issue that's that's on the outskirts right now that could hit home. Um, but you know, again, you know, retail investors um, and the markets they're they're just they're ignoring it they're not seeing it and you know it comes down to you know what from investing you know you got to hit yeah. your bets you know make a little bit of hay while the sun shines but you can't get too greedy well hey, you look at uh, what's doing with these office buildings people are yeah. you know come back somewhat but half of manhattan is empty and yeah. all these high rents that you've seen in these major areas all predicated upon major occupancy rates, high 90s plus, and mm -hmm. escalating rents going up 5 to 10% a year into the future. So now that all those assumptions have been uh, destroyed, uh, we're left to pick up the pieces. And, you know, I'm not sure what you do with these boxy high rises. They really don't work for for residential because you know, most of the space is interior space that would not have any windows. I guess you could build storage or grow houses, um, you know, and uh, put apartments around the perimeter and have, uh, you know, start growing crops there, whatever they might be. And, and and really go hand in hand with the concept of the the 15 minute city, right? Yeah. Um, yeah and 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 that's that is probably one of the the unnerving things you know when you actually going back to what we were talking about you know a couple months ago um mm -hmm. fundamentally the numbers still aren't working you know i mean they're we're starting to see the expansion of the economy uh the market likes that but you know you've got all this debt you know and yes the national debt we're approaching 33 trillion but the consumer debt the corporate mm -hmm. debt and these loans that are coming due you know i i think um the banks cannot absorb those assets and and write it off. It's it's just it's too expansive, and so yeah. you know how how are they going to handle that? Um, you know the buyouts because it's going to be so large. You know, are you going to have the big three or big four come in and and eat up all these these little banks and mm -hmm. absorb them all? Um, and then you know less competition, and it's really going to affect the small business owners going forward, which is going to also be a dredge on on the economy because. A lot of businesses can't get the credit and loans right now to to continue to grow. Yeah, and yet uh, I continue to get credit card offers in my mailbox every day. <laughs> Isn't it crazy? Uh, it, it's nuts. Um, so I was talking to uh, uh, a car dealership owner of a car dealership, and uh, you know he was telling me that depending on the credit score for new cars, unless you go directly from the manufacturer. Um, you're having to put way more money down than what you used to, and especially if it's a used car. Um, but, you know, you have luxury vehicles uh, like uh, UTVs, ATVs, you know, those types um, where, uh, you know, the, the used market was so excessive that banks are finally starting to price in. Well, you know, that's not the real value. We're not going to give you a loan on that. Um, and based on what the real value is, you're still going to have to put a little bit down. So things are starting to change. Credit's really starting to get tight all the way across the board. Um, and so when you see it from the, you know, the 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 asset, depreciable asset class, like, you know, cars and UTVs, ATVs mm -hmm. and boats, um, you know, just imagine what that's going to look like, you know, in the commercial real estate space. It's going to be harder and harder for people to to refinance those loans and those deals. It's going to be bloody. So actually, go ahead. It's going to be a bloody mess. Hey, you see... The big indicators, the RV index, yes, uh, sales are down because debt interest rates are up, making them, I guess, if you want one of those ones that's like a bus, you know, you'd be paying uh, more than a higher note than you'd be paying on your uh, house. And also the Rolex index, Rolex prices are down around the world. And then we got China, which is an absolute basket case. I don't, I don't see where they come back no matter how much money they pump into the economy because you know the real estate market is dead in the water there 
So we got like a lot of headwinds. And yet, I guess uh, the perception is the U.S. economy, uh, it's the best looking house in Baltimore, right? It, it, the uh, the best of the worst, right? I mean, that's uh, in 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 the near term, um, mm -hmm. you know, through this year, uh, I, I, I think it does not look bad. But what scares me is, you know, the the uh, weakening of the U.S. dollar, right? Uh, we, in Brixa. Um, you know, the the U.S. possibly losing their status as the reserve currency of the world. You know, BRICS are coming in saying that, you know, they're going to have their digital currency, but it's going to be backed by gold. Um, mm -hmm. You know, what's that going to do to the U.S. dollar? And, and if we lose the status as the reserve currency of the world, you know, for trading dollars, um, you know, life in America, it's going to be it's going to be different. Uh, it it yeah. really is. And, and what's that going to look like as it relates yeah. to, you know, these loans that are outstanding? Yeah, Houston, we have a problem, but uh, but you know the BRICS thing doesn't really bother me. Those have been the worst performing economies for the past since the the GFC, since the global financial collapse. They've all performed horribly. You know, China, you can't believe any our numbers are political diced and sliced, but China's are lack all credibility. Um, oh, they wouldn't lie. They wouldn't lie about their numbers. No, not them, not them. But, you know, you, you look at it and then all of their Belt and Road initiative that everyone was so enamored of, all the countries are, are defaulting on that debt. And, yeah. you know, there's like a lot. So the BRICS thing for the time being, and who's gold, how much, how can we trust them? Because, you know, the Chinese, uh, you know, you you, uh, you you got to take it with a grain. They're like into hyper hypothecation and cross collateralizing the same collateral over and over and over again. We've seen that. So, you know, mm -hmm. for right now, yeah. the dollar is where it's at. If you've got to park $10 billion over the weekend, are you going to put it in uh, the uh, Export Bank of China or are you going to put it at JP Morgan Chase, right? I mean, well, and I, I think that's why the dollar, you know, jumped up uh, above 100 again. You know, it it, yeah. it dipped below. But I mean, where else are, are you going to go? Because the, you know, the economist looked at uh, the GDP for for China and said, well, you know, obviously it's it's inflated. Um, and, you know, Russia, I mean, obviously that's that's not going to make a whole lot of sense. So, mm -hmm. again, you know, it's it's the best of the worst. I mean, it, it really is. These are the best of times. They were the worst of times uh, yeah. from uh Tale of Two Cities in uh, uh, Dickens, uh, you know, novel. So we're in the best of all possible economies. We're in the worst. And I guess it depends where you are. I mean, the state of our cities here, they're just, they're self-imploding, totally unnecessary. Uh, and they can't figure out why people are leaving. You think personal safety might just play a role in that? Look, it, you look at Florida, Real estate prices yeah. are up for the past year in the face of all of these rate hikes. They're up. And you know what that tells you? You can buy property down there. Yeah. You know what that? Yeah. There's no inventory. You know what that tells me? People want to get out of those blue, and it's not political, just the high crime, declining quality of life cities and come to Florida and Texas and uh, other places in the South. Georgia's growing incredibly. North Carolina, South Carolina, you know, they were the poorer mm -hmm. sisters of Florida, really. Georgia, too. Florida is the wealthiest state right. in the country, arguably, other than, you know, New York was, California. Florida probably has eclipsed it because the financial center has moved to Miami from New York. Uh, all these hedge funds, you know, I knew it when I moved down and I saw, oh, well, Goldman's open in a little branch office here just so the executives can get away during the winter and work in a better climate. But I knew this was a trend and they were all marching for the door. A point being here that, you know, if you uh, if you're getting diagnosed with a migraine and you have a brain tumor, it's not going to do you much good in the long run popping down those uh those aspirins, they're not going to help. And they're saying, well, you know, people are leaving these cities because they want better weather. But, you know, at some point, you got to admit, uh, people don't want to be in Chicago because they're afraid of their own personal safety. And that is the biggest factor 
in mm -hmm. the migratory trends. Let's be honest about it. Well, I mean, look at California. You've got a lot of very, very large, you know, private equity firms moving out. And the the yeah. gentleman, forgive me, I can't think of his name, who's running against the the uh, L.A. Uh, D.A. Gascon. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, common sense. He's like, you know, we're we're, we're going to start, uh, you know, prosecuting people for crimes. Oh, what a novel idea. You, yeah. I mean, the, the fact that that's what you're going to run on. Um, it tells you the the depravity, the current level of depravity in the cities in in the lack of law and order. Um, and and I think people are tired of it. And that's why they're migrating yeah. to those areas where they, right. they feel safe and, and can raise a family. Hey, uh, you know, he's running on a, the, his opponents running on that. We're going to prosecute crime and he might lose. Look what happened yeah. with the Chicago mayoralty race. The. Uh, guy who Knocking. believes that the police cause crime won, you know? Yeah. Well, if you consider that they compile statistics and if you didn't have the police, there'd be no statistics. Therefore the crime rate, crime rate would be at zero. Then yes, the police cause crime, you know, are they perfect? No, we all know that, but uh, I'd much rather see them patrolling the streets than, uh, than having to do it myself and uh, become a vigilante. And that's what they're in. They're embracing the uh, return of vigilantism. And then if you defend yourself, you get prosecuted by these Soros, uh, Soros DAs, right? Well, anyway, you, I don't want to. That's exactly it. You know, yeah. we could. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But, we could have a whole nother uh, conversation yeah. on this. Yeah. And, and for this hours, isn't political. For sure. It's not political. It's made no, political. It's not. No, the right to safety just, is a fundamental right. human right. Your right to defend yourself, fundamental human right nothing to do with politics and no you don't it's, it's called being an american right yeah, and life totally. liberty and the pursuit of happiness i mean that's really what it comes yeah. down to and um your life and and liberty and, and if you're if you cannot move about freely without being in fear for your life um when when you're having uh encampments in your yard and you're having to leave your your windows rolled down and your car unlocked yeah. Uh, so that people don't break into it. This is not a political thing. This is more of a uh, look depravity of of the system. And what do we need to do to to fix it? Um, you know, the good yeah. thing is um, is that people are saying we're we're done. We're tired of it. And you know, I mm -hmm. you know, I hopefully they they've woken the sleeping giant and things are going to start to turn and we'll get the people in office to to Let's fix hope. it. I don't care who they are, what side of the fence, as long as it gets fixed. Let us hope. I mean. Yes. Yeah, because, you know, the South has lots of problems. Traditionally, the South was more violent than the North. Um, and that all changed, uh, you know, a number of years ago where the uh, North, you know, well, in any event. Hey, Ed, tell us where we find you, how we connect with you on the Web. Yeah, EGSIfinancial.com. That is the best place to find us. All right. EGSI financial.com financial yep okay the link to that is in the show notes on this interview on financial survival network.com make sure you go there sign up for your free newsletter and uh, if you got a question comment for ed myself email kl at kerrylutz.com write your youtube comments down below sign you know subscribe share all that good stuff favorite and ed we'll talk to you again soon thanks for coming on hey thanks for having me Thanks for listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.